In this session, we're going to be talking about circuits. Circuits are a little bit, can be sometimes confusing, but I actually like teaching circuits because it's actually fun to learn. You'll see on the screen there are some notes. Go ahead and pause the video, write down the notes. You may even want to draw this little schematic, and we'll talk about it here in just a minute. All right, let's talk about circuits. There's two types of circuits that you can have. The first one is called a series. And you may want to circle or square that in so that you catch the first one. This is what you've drawn here. A series circuit is the, the simplest of all circuits. It has one path for the current to travel. It contains energy, an energy source, a path, and some kind of load, whatever you're using, whether it be a light bulb or a machine or whatever the case may be. Now, there is a short way to understand how circuits work. You'll see the battery is always going to be two lines. The energy is going to go this direction all the way around and try to make it back to the battery. Here's what you have to know. Electricity has to make it all the way around for this light bulb to light up. If anything happens, if you break the wire here, it's over. Even if you break the wire after the bulb, it's over. The electricity has to go all the way around and make it back to the battery. That's the most important thing to know with circuits. One more time. The energy is going to go all the way around. It's going to make it all the way back. That's called having a closed circuit. You have to have a closed circuit in order for it to work. And so this closed circuit is vital for it to work correctly. Now, you'll also notice... You'll also notice there's a closed switch. You'll notice it's like a bridge. If electricity goes across the bridge, it can keep going. All right, now a couple of things to notice. With this type of series circuit, this is cheap Christmas lights. If I had an extra bulb right here, and I can't draw it as good as they do, if I have an extra light bulb there, so in this case, let's say there's two light bulbs. If this light bulb goes out, so does that one because they are in series. If one goes out, they all go out. That's the really cheap Christmas lights. Okay, So you have to find the one that's gone out, and then they'll all light back up. Okay, So basically, you have to have electricity go all the way around. If there's any blockage or any stoppage, Nothing lights up, nothing works. So if a light bulb goes out, they both go out because it's not a closed circuit anymore. Let's look at the other one. The other type of circuit is called a parallel circuit. I'm going to give you a second to pause the video and write this down. Maybe draw the picture. Come back and talk about it in a second. All right, parallel circuits provide more than one path for the current to travel. Now, let me explain what this means. A parallel circuit, electricity could go down this way or this way or this way. It has multiple paths that it can go. Remember, the goal is to start at the battery and make it all the way back to the battery. If anything blocks and it can't get around to the battery, nothing lights up. All right? Most circuits are parallel since when, if one lamp goes out, the others stay lit. Let's check this out. First, let me tell you, a resistor is just an extra part. It slows down the current a little bit. They don't make you know much about resistors, so basically you can ignore that. But if a resistor is broken, that's a blockage. If there is an open switch, like if they drew the switch out here and it's open, you can't get across there, nothing lights up. So right now, the switch is closed. All the resistors work. So that means electricity can go this way to get all the way around. It could go this way to get all the way around. And it could go all the way around here to make it all the way around. So there's three different paths that it can take. If this is light bulb one, two, and three, let's see if you understand. If light bulb one goes out, do the other two go out? The answer is no. Here's why. If there's a blockage here, 
electricity still can still get around that. So this light bulb would light up. Electricity can get around here, so this light bulb would work. If light bulb, now let, let's say we have three brand new light bulbs. They're all lit up, and light bulb two goes out. Will this one light up? Yes, electricity can make it all the way around. And electricity can make it all the way past number three. It'll stay lit up too. So we now put new light bulbs in it, and we have three brand new. They're all lit up, and then this one burns out. Do the other two light up? Yes, they do. Electricity can get to that bulb and around, and that bulb around, and get there. Now, let's say we have three light bulbs, and we open the switch. Electricity will make it here. That one lights up. Electricity, oh, stoppage. That one won't light up that one won't light up. The only one that will light up is number one because there's a way to get around the switch. So all you have to do is take your pencil or pen and follow the lines trying to get from the battery back to the battery. If you can make it all the way around, that light bulb will light up. We'll see another one of those here in just a second. This is called parallel circuits. These are the more expensive Christmas lights. These are the ones that when one goes out, you can tell which one it is because it's the only one that's out. These are more expensive because they take a whole lot more wires to make it work. Parallel. Series are all in a straight line. Parallel go around so that make it work. Here's an example of a question from the tax test that may ask you to know a little bit about circuits. Pause the video, look at it careful, see what you get. All right. Which switches, if opened, will cause the light bulb to stop glowing? All right. The electricity is trying to make it all the way around. So the electricity is going to go this way. Now remember, the light bulb can't light up until it makes it all the way back around. If it goes this way, it'll make it. If that one's open, is there a way around it? Yep, they could go around that way. So it's not S. It's not that one. If this one's open, there's a blockage, is there still a way for the electricity to get around? Yeah, it could go that way. It could have made it past that one. So it's not that one either. If this one was open, is there a way around? Yeah, there's always a way. The only one it could be is Q. If I'm correct, and electricity goes around, it has a path to go this way or this way. But if this switch is open, it'll never light up. Q. We're right. Q is the only switch in the series to both the battery and the light. Okay? Now, this is a parallel circuit. They use the word series. That they used the incorrect word there. But in this parallel, it's the only one in the line that controls it. You got that? You understand? Remember, electricity's got to make it all the way, find a way somehow to get from the battery all the way back to the battery. If there's a blockage, the light bulb doesn't light up. So you just follow it with your pencil or pen. Now, whenever we talk about electricity, there are a couple of things that we have to be able to calculate. And here's an example of one of them, and then we'll do uh, the other two here in a second. It says use the formula sheet. Pause the video, write this example down, and then we'll work it together. What is the current in a copper wire that has a resistance, there's a magic word, current, resistance, and ohms, and it's connected to 9 volts, those units are going to be helpful, an electrical source. So I need to find a formula that says current equals voltage over resistance. What is the current? There's what I don't know of a copper wire that has a resistance of 2 ohms. That's a really weird word. Don't worry about it. I'll just write it where it goes. And it's connected to 9 volts electrical source. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. I don't have to understand a whole lot about electricity. All I have to do is plug the numbers in the formula where they go. Notice, I wrote the formula, wrote the numbers where they go, and solved it. Very simple, simple question. Okay? That is dealing with current.
All right, we'll try one of those again in a minute. Let's try the other formula for electricity. And electricians have to be really good at this because they deal with it all the time. Let's talk about electrical power. Electrical power. Electrical power is equal to voltage times current. Now it may be confusing because it uses this formula, V times I. Why is current an I? Well, they had already used C for something else, so they just used another letter. Don't let it bother you much. And so all you do is plug in your numbers. Let's take an example of one uh, that you can try, and we're just going to plug the numbers where they go and see what happens. Okay? A hair dryer has a voltage of 120 volts and a current of, <coughs> excuse me, 10 amps. That's its power. All right. When you read the question, it helps you pick the formula. A hairdryer has a voltage and a current. Find the one that has voltage, current, and power. There it is right there. So it has a voltage of 120 volts. That number goes there. And a current of 10 amps. If you don't know what the A means, it doesn't matter. You just plug it where it goes in the formula. 120 times 10 is 1,200 that's an easy number, 1,200 watts. It's like on a light bulb, the watts on a bulb. So that hair dryer uses a whole lot of power. It's pretty simple. You just plug the numbers where they go. A lot of the mathematics in the physics part is find the formula and plug in. Let's try one more. So that one's electrical power. The last one is called electrical energy. Electrical energy. And all we're doing is just trying to work each of the formulas. Electrical energy, which is going to be E, is going to be equal to power times time. So how much power there is times how long it was running. Let's see if we can work one of these. A 60-watt bulb is left on for 200 hours. Well, that's a long time, but bulbs last for a long time. How much energy is used? All right. When you read the question, okay, watts. There's time. And it says energy. You have to find an energy formula. The only energy formula is this one. Energy equals power times time. Uh, power is 60 watts. The time was 200 hours. Multiply those together. 60 times 200, that's uh, 12,000 watts. It's a whole lot. Or it may be, wow, you can shorten that to 12 kilowatts. Remember, in the metric system, kilo means a thousand, so we just drop the thousand, put the little k. It could be either answer. It's probably going to be this one, but that's how you do the math. You just plug it in the formula, and you solve. In the next session, you're in the next section. You're going to try just to plug the numbers in and see if you can use the formulas. You don't have to understand a ton about electricity or be an electrician. You just have to plug the numbers in and solve them. Let's see how you do.